Hi, I'm Eugene Tang, a research software engineer at Google Brain Tokyo team. In this presentation, I'll talk about our recent work, the sensory neuron as a transformer, permutation invariant neural networks for reinforcement learning. This is a joint work with my colleague, David Ha. And this paper is partially inspired by the two experiments shown on the slide, and which are designed to test if humans can adjust to inputs that are different from what we usually experience. For example, on the left, subjects are required to learn to ride a reverse bicycle. And on the right, we wonder if people can get used to visions from an upside down goggle. The subjects in both experiments were eventually able to adapt to the new inputs. This suggests that we can train our brain to adjust to new input fashions. Uh, this hypothesis is also supported um, by the works in brain research. In the sensory substitution experiments, the researchers showed that blind people are able to see if the visual signal from a camera is transformed and passed to a two degree of pokes on the person's back and later on to an electrode array on the person's tongue. Uh, in all the previously mentioned experiments, the subject spent weeks or months training their brain to adjust to the new input fashion. Uh, we wonder if we can create artificial systems um, that can rapidly adapt to sensory input changes without the need to be retrained. Um, to put this goal in a concrete example, uh, it is challenging for us to play this car racing game if, if all we can observe is the scrambled screen on the right. Unless the model is retrained, modern deep learning systems are generally unable to adapt to the reordering of the inputs either. Uh, in this paper, we attempt to solve this problem and devise agents that are permutation invariant. We managed to train such agents on various tasks one thing to notice is that we didn't shuffle the observations during training to force the agents to memorize other patterns. Instead, permutation invariance is achieved through a special design in the agents. Uh, here we show that the ant robot observation are shuffled frequently, yet the robot can quickly adapt to the new observations. And on the right, we show a card pole agent rebalancing the pole as the user reshuffle its inputs. Moreover, the agent can perform well even with 10 input channels of pure noises. Uh, in vision tasks, we present the agent with the scrambled screens, and yet our car racing agent is able to drive well even when most of the global spatial information is lost. In the variation of the Atari pawn, which we call puzzle pawn, our agent is able to play game even when its input space is constantly shuffled. Okay, now let me describe in detail how a method works. Um, mathematically speaking, we are looking for a function f that for a given input data x returns identical results no matter how x is permuted. We rely on the attention mechanism to achieve this goal. In the attention paper, the query, key, and the value components are functions of the input data x. Permuting x will also affect these three matrices. The original form of attention is not permutation invariant. In set transformers, um, the authors made the query matrix independent of the input. Now, permuting the input will only affect the K and the V matrices. In the matrix multiplication formula, this only affects the ordering of the indices B. Hence, the output Y becomes permutation invariant. Um, as we'll discuss next, this formula lets us convert an observation signal from the environment into a permutation invariant message which is then um, fed into the agent's policy network. Okay, this is the architecture of our proposed method. We add an extra layer, which we call attention neuron, in front of the agent's policy network. At each step, attention neuron accepts observation at the current step and the action from the previous step. It then generates a permutation invariant message to the downstream system. Uh, attention neuron can be viewed as a collection of sensory neurons. Given an observation, it segments the input into components, each of which will be fed to an independent sensory neuron. For non-vision tasks, where the observations are usually 1D vectors, the results are from, from input segmentations uh, are a bunch of scalars. For vision tasks, where the observations are images, uh, we use a sliding window to crop the input into non-overlapping um, patches. Attention neuron has an embedded attention mechanism. Here is how we create the K, V, and Q components. 
uh, each sensory neuron is responsible for generating one row uh, for the key and the value matrices based on the input component accepts and the two functions fk and fv that are shared among all neurons uh, on the right fv accepts only the observation component each neuron uses it to populate one row in the value matrix matrix uh, on the left each neuron concatenates its own observation component with the action from the previous time step and uh, um, passes to FK to generate one row for the key matrix. Here, uh, we made two uh, design choices. Uh, first, we need a temporal memory in K and V. Uh, since the ordering of its input is arbitrary, having access to a stream of data is easier for attention neuron to identify the inputs. However, this alone may not be sufficient. For example, we're controlling a light robot. Most of the sensory readings are joint angles of velocities um, from the legs, which are not only numerically identically bounded, but also change in similar patterns. To address this, we include the previous actions in the key creation to allow causal relations inference. Uh, as mentioned before, the key matrix is independent of the input data. It is a bank of latent embeddings. In this work, uh, we use the positional encoding from the transformer paper. Here, the row indices serve as the positions. We then use the attention mechanism to calculate the layer's output. As another design choice, um, although we could have combined Q and the WQ and treat it as a single learnable matrix, we don't do so because we can reduce the number of parameters by factoring them. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, shuffling the observations will only affect the row orders in the K and the V matrices. The net result has no effect on the output. Attention neuron thus generates permutation invariant messages. Another interesting property is that changing the observation size will only alter the number of rows in the K and the V matrices and will not change the shape of the output. So as long as we have proper normalization mechanisms, attention neuron can perform with arbitrary input sizes. Uh, we first tested our agent in the card pole swing up task. Uh, as, the agent, as for the agent's architecture, we employ a feed forward network as the policy pi. Uh, inside attention neuron, we use LSTM as our FK, and FV is a pass through function. We train the agent using evolution strategies. Uh, table one shows the test results. Compared with the feed forward baseline, uh, our agent works, but its performance is not as good as the baseline. Um, this is expected because our agent spends its initial steps in each rollout uh, for input identification. Next, without retraining each agent, uh, we test them with the observation permutations. Our agent was able to maintain its performance while the baseline had a large drop in score. In the next experiment, we duplicated the observations and test both agents without retraining. Uh, despite the redundancy, our agent is able to maintain its score. For comparison, uh, we trained another feed-forward baseline, and the new baseline's performance is again slightly higher than ours. In the final test, we add input channels of pure noises and test both agents without retraining. Our agent was able to keep its performance when the baseline failed. Okay, to confirm attention neuron's output is permutation invariant, we plot its evolution from two test episodes where observations, uh, where observations are unshuffled in one test and permuted in the other. Uh, the two plots in the figure are identical, proving the permutation invariance. Uh, okay, so using similar settings, we trained and tested our agent in the pi bullet ant locomotion task and compared it with a feed forward baseline. Uh, similar to the card power results, our agent's performance is slightly lower, but it adapts to permuted observations effortlessly when the baseline failed. Uh, although we've been training the agent using ES, we want to point out that attention neuron is differentiable, so we now train our agent using gradient-based methods. Specifically, we behavior cloned from the baseline policy due to the inductive bias in the architecture, a student policy of similar size to the teacher policy and cannot give close enough performance. But when we enlarge the network, its performance increased. Um, this is important because as we all know, training an agent from scratch is costly. Uh, if we have in hand some pre-trained models, then we can use behavior cloning to efficiently create permutation invariant equivalents. In the Tauri pond, we stacked observations and used the feed forward networks as FK and FV this time um, to get rid of the huge computational cost. 
to demonstrate attention neuron is compatible with policy networks um, besides MLPs, we use a convolution network this time. One interesting discovery we found is that an agent trained with less information behaves better when it is given more information in tests. For example, during training, we discard randomly a certain ratio of the patches. Uh, this setting is similar to occluding part of the screen. We then change this occlusion ratio during tests and recorded the results in heat map. Up to 70% training occlusion ratio, the agent's performance increases as we move from right to left in each row. This supports our discovery. In our previous work, we proposed attention agent, which achieved the state of the art in car racing and demonstrated the capability of generalization. We therefore use it at both our downstream system uh, policy network and as a baseline uh, in this uh, experiment. Uh, though with slightly lower scores, our agent can drive well even with these scrambled screens. Our agent also exhibited a strong generalization capability. In four modified environments, our agent did not suffer from significant performance loss in most cases. Uh, as a comparison, we also train an agent that is the combination of NetRand and attention agent. NetRand is specifically designed for better generalization, and we can see its performance is similar to ours. However, we did not explicitly design any mechanism in attention agent to enhance the zero-shot transfer capability. And this is an interesting uh, byproduct. Okay, um, here we show the agent's performance when we reshuffle the observations every T steps during the rollout. In the rollout, um, the agent, as I said, it spends the initial st time steps to identify the observations. So as a general trend, the more frequently we reshuffle, the poorer the performance due to the extra time spent on this uh, input identification. Uh, one possible application of our permutation invariant agent is in robotics where such a policy can avoid errors due to incorrect mapping between models and real robots uh, during this policy deployment. And secondly, the robustness our agent demonstrated in the card pool experiment suggests a fault tolerant system where the system can identify useful information from noisy ones. Uh, one limitation of the current work is that the patch size selection will affect both the performance and the complexity for vision-based tasks. Another limitation is that permutation invariant property only applies to the inputs and not to the outputs. For future works, we plan to work on achieving permutation invariance in both the input and the output space. This may allow us to develop a single policy to control multiple robots of different morphologies. And lastly, it is possible for attention neuron to accept more external information, such as reward signals, so that the agent can meta-learn for a better adaptation capability. Okay, uh, this concludes my presentation today. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit our website.